Hi guys, my name's Gus. I'm a cosmetic dentist in and around London in the UK. And today we're gonna to talk about the two different types of teeth you can have placed on your dental implant. And these two types are either screw retained or cement retained. But let me explain why it's so important to go for one over the other. You see, there's two ways that we can glue the tooth on. Okay, so putting the implant in, that's kind of phase one. And then phase two is putting the, the connecting the tooth onto the implant. Now, we could either have the tooth made exactly like you would have a crown made uh, on a natural tooth or a veneer, anything like that. And then we can glue this onto your implant. Okay, it seems like pretty straightforward. We've been gluing crowns onto teeth for forever and a day and it works really, really well. Now, the problem is when you do something like this, a lot of, well, maybe not a lot, but some of the glue, which is used to hold the cement in, remains around the edge of your implant. This causes localized infection and inflammation, which can lead to loss of your implant. It can, it can cause the bone around your implants to erode away and they become loose and then you eventually lose them. Now, if it was that easy, why wouldn't we just always use screw retained? Okay, which is a, a, without any glue, the, the actual tooth itself is screwed into the implant. Let me explain this by drawing a diagram, my favorite diagram of a front tooth. If we cut it in half and you look at the bone uh, around this tooth, okay, when you take this tooth out, you're always going to lose the bone around the front of the tooth. And that means your new position of bone is a little bit further back than it was when you had your tooth. This means your implant has to be further back and often tilted back a little bit as well. When you do this, if you were to draw a, a straight line down the long axis of this um, implant, you would see that if we got the tooth in the right place, the, the long axis would come out the front of the tooth. And this means that if we were going to have a screw channel, we would have to have the hole of the screw right in the front of the tooth. Now, a better way to do it is angulate this implant more upright, similar to a natural root. Now, if you do this, you can see in this diagram, the implant has completely come out of the bone. But if you look at the angulation of the screw channel, we've now got the screw channel coming out from behind the tooth, which is a much more advantageous way because it means that putting the tooth on, you're never dealing with any cements. If there's any problems in, or screw loosening of the abutments, it's really easy to just unscrew this tooth, have a look what's going on underneath, have a look at the implants, all of that, and then screw it all back together. It's really, we call it retrievable. It's very easy to go back in and do what you need to do for ongoing maintenance. Now, if there's such a big advantage of doing everything screw retained, why wouldn't we always do it screw retained? The answer is that in order to get the angulation of the implant correct, quite often we need to consider additional treatments. So in this diagram, you can see that the implant has moved out of the bone at the front. Okay, this is, this is no good. You can't just leave it like this because this is gonna have a lot of ongoing problems in the future. Um, ideally, we want to have at least a millimeter around the implant, a millimeter of bone all the way around the implant. And here, obviously you've not done this. So in addition to having the implant, we now need to consider having bone grafting um, treatments to increase this thickness of bone at the front, okay? And if you've seen my other videos on implants and the front teeth, you'll know that in the vast majority of cases, we have to do bone or tissue grafting because we lose thickness and we do it from for a cosmetic reason, but also for this reason, so that we're able to angle the implant in the correct way so that it, it, the screw channel comes out of the back of the tooth. Now, recently, there's actually been quite a lot of advances in in implant dentistry and also, you know, what we can fit on top of the implant, i.e. the tooth. And there has been developments of these angle, these angle correction screws which to be honest um, got me out of trouble on uh, you know in a, in a couple of uh, occasions especially cases where i'm putting the teeth on implants which haven't been planned correctly so 
In these situations, what we can do is have a screw going in to the long axis of the tooth, but it effectively goes around a corner inside the tooth and then sits in. And then the screwdriver is designed in such a way that it doesn't need to be in the long axis of the, the screw to work. So we can actually still get a screw retained tooth even if the implant placement isn't exactly right. Now it's always better to make sure the implant placement is exactly right every single time which is why I use guided surgery for the vast majority of implant cases which I do. With guided surgery you can do all of this planning, you can get your implant positioning exactly right, you can get the angulations exactly right, the depth of the implant all virtually planned on a computer and then the guide is made so that you can replicate that in real life with zero stress. So I've done another video on guided surgery. You can check that out whenever you want to. But um, I just thought I'd share with you the pros and cons of these two types of teeth which can go on top of the implants. And these days, if you talk to many implant surgeons, the vast majority of them will say, always have screw retained if you can. Okay, there's nothing wrong with cement retained. Um, I'm not saying that if you have a cement retained crown, it's going to have all of these problems, but it's very, very well known that this, the glue around the, um, the crown, if you have it cement retained, is notoriously difficult to clean and therefore it's, it's always going to cause a little bit of infection there. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful. If you've got questions, comments, leave them down below and I will read all of them. Take care.